All right, welcome y'all. So glad to have you here. I'm Brian, and today we'll be going over multiplying and dividing fractions and mixed numbers. Hey everybody, welcome to multiplying and dividing fractions and mixed numbers on the T6 math course with me, Brian. So everyone's favorite is fractions, I know that. So we're all itching to get started. Let's jump right in. All right, our goal for this lesson is that we will be able to multiply and divide fractions, mixed numbers, and whole numbers. So we're going to be doing all, both operations, multiplying and dividing, with a mixture of mixed numbers and fractions. So some key vocabulary to discuss. One, we have an improper fraction, which is a fraction where the numerator is larger than the denominator. Remember that all improper fractions are greater than one whole. Two, we have mixed numbers, which has a whole number and a fraction. As we can see here, we do have three and one eighth, where three is the whole number and one eighth is the fraction. They are called mixed numbers because it is a mix of a whole and a fraction. When we hear the word product, that's going to be the answer to a multiplication problem. So for example, if we had five times four is equal to 20, in this case, 20 would be our product, the answer to the problem. So four, we have numerator, which is the number on top of the fraction, and we have denominator, so that's the number on the bottom of the fraction. So in the case of seven tenths, seven is the numerator and 10 is the denominator. In four division, we have quotient, which is the answer to a division problem. So if we had a reverse of 20 divided by four is equal to five, five would be the quotient since it is the answer to the division problem. Number seven, we have the word reciprocal. So you're gonna hear me say the word reciprocal a few times throughout this lesson. And it is the opposite of a fraction where the numerator and denominator are swapped. So if we look, the original fraction was four fifths. The reciprocal of that fraction is the flipped version, which is five fourths. Key point for multiplication. When you multiply fractions, you do not need common denominators. So if I have four sevenths times three fifths, we do not need common denominators. That is something that you do not have to worry about. In fact, multiplying and dividing is far fewer steps than adding and subtracting fractions. When we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. So we would do four times three, would give us 12. And then we would multiply our denominators. Seven times five is 35. So our final answer would be 12 35ths. Key point number three for multiplication. If we're going to multiply mixed numbers, change your mixed numbers into improper fractions before multiplying. So as a reminder, we would do two times three, which is six plus one is seven, so we'd have seven halves times three times four is 12, plus two is 14, and we'd have 14 thirds. From here, we would then be able to multiply and follow our rules, but we have to turn them into improper fractions before we do this. A lot of times what I see is that someone will say three times four is equal to 12, and one half times two thirds is equal to two sixths, and then put them together. No, not correct. Do not fall into that trap. I know that they're gonna put answers down that look like that would have come from that answer. So be very careful. Four, you can cross simplify before multiplying if possible. It must always include one numerator and one denominator. So I'll say you can cross simplify up and down diagonal this direction or diagonal this direction, but we cannot cross simplify across. That does not work. So in this case, let me erase this, good. So in this case, if I look diagonally, I look at seven and 21. I know that both of these are divisible by seven. So I can do seven divided by seven, 21 divided by seven. Seven divided by seven is just one whole. 21 divided by seven is three. If I look diagonally, I know four goes into both. 
4 divided by 4 is just 1. 32 divided by 4 is 8. So I now have 1 over 1 times 3 over 8. I bring over those numbers that I had before. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 8 is 8. My answer would be 3 eighths. This helps us have smaller numbers in the be smaller numbers to multiply, so we don't have to simplify after. If your answer is an improper fraction, you may turn it back into a mixed number. So generally, look at your answer choices, see what the answer choices are given as. Most of the time, they will be given as mixed numbers, so know how to turn your improper fractions back into mixed numbers. So let's also get into division. So one, if we have mixed numbers are involved, we're going to turn them into improper fractions always. So make sure that we just get into that habit. So we have 3 times 6 is 18, plus 2 is 20. So we have 20 thirds divided by 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and we would have 5 fourths. So that would be step 1 if you're dealing with division. 2. We follow the KCF rule. Not to be confused with KFC, it is the KCF rule. So the first rule is K, keep the first fraction. So whatever comes first in the fraction, we keep it. So if we had 7 eighths divided by 1 fourth, 7 eighths would be kept. For C, it means to change, where we change the division sign to a multiplication sign. So we change the sign. So if I was going to show you what happened, we'd keep 7 eighths, and the division sign changes to become multiplication. And the last one is to flip F, or flip the last fraction. So in 1 fourth, they swap positions. You put the reciprocal. We have 4 over 1. So now this division problem has turned into a multiplication problem where we can multiply across. 7 times 4 is 28. 8 times 1 is 8. And then we would be able to simplify from here. So if we were to do 6 and 2 thirds divided by 1 and 1 fourth, again, let's take this. So that's t 3 times 6 is 18, plus 2 is 20. So we have 20 thirds divided by 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5, 5 fourths. Now, some of us like to try to do this as we're going through it, of try to keep change and flip. I highly suggest writing out the division problem first before you decide to do anything, because then you can label keep, change, flip. So we keep 20 thirds. We change to multiplication. 5 fourths flips to 4 fifths. Now I can cross simplify. So 20 and 5, both divisible by 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4. 5 divided by 5 is 1. And I can multiply across. If I looked the other way, 3 and 4, we can simplify that. So 4 times 4 is 16 over 3. So our answer would be 16 thirds. Now remember, if you can cross simplify prior to multiplication, do it just like I showed you. We do look cross ways. Now, this is to keep numbers smaller. So before we said that 20 and 5 both shared a common factor of 5. So I could do 20 divided by 5, which is 4, and 5 divided by 5, which was 1. Cross simplification, super helpful. We can't cross simplify 3 and 4 because the only common factor they have is the number 1. When you do this, you then multiply across like normal. So I showed you before, we have 4 times 4 is equal to 16. 3 times 1 is equal to 3. Then we simplify the answer if possible. 16 thirds, it is in simplest form. So even though it is a, an improper fraction, it is still simplified. We do not have to simplify it. And if the answer is an improper fraction, we can turn it back into a mixed number or just into a mixed number. So if we do this, 16 divided by 3 is 5. 5 times 3 is 15. Subtract, we get 1. So our answer would be 5 and 1 third. Now why do we do this? Repeating the same fraction amount or splitting a fractional amount into equal size groups is going to be incredibly important. 
for such things as creating doses of medication, and there are other life situations where this shows up. So knowing how to multiply and divide fractional amounts is important to being able to fully understand and master fractions. All right, we have come to our sample questions. As you know, you have your options where you can do these with me, you can do these on your own, or any mix in between. So our first problem is 3 fourths times 1 half. So I'm just going to rewrite this. I just like to rewrite whatever problem I'm working on. And then I first am going to look to see if I can cross simplify. 4 and 1, no common factor but 1. 3 and 2, no common factor but 1. So I just multiply across. So I'm going to multiply 3 times 1 is 3. 4 times 2 is going to give me 8. So my answer is 3 eighths. Generally, if you cannot simplify or cross simplify, then your answer should be in simplest form. Number 2, we have 7 eighths times 2 and 1 fourth. I notice that I do have a uh, mixed number, so I'm going to turn it into an improper fraction. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9, so we're going to have 9 fourths. So we have 7 eighths times 9 fourths. I'm going to look diagonally to see if there's any cross simplification. I see 8 and 9, common factor is only 1. 7 and 4, greatest common factor, the only factor is also just the number 1. So I multiply across. 7 times 9 is 63. 8 times 4 is 32. So I have 63 over 32. If I was going to turn that back into a mixed number, since our answer is an improper fraction, I know this goes in once, times 32, we get 31. So my final answer would be 1 and 31 30 seconds. All right, now we are multiplying two mixed numbers together. So first thing to do is to turn it into an improper fraction. 5 times 3 is 15 plus 2 is 17, so we get 17 fifths times 6 times 4 is 24, plus 5 is 29, so we get 29 over 6. Now, because these numbers are larger, I'm going to look diagonally and really hope that I can simplify, but 5 and 29 only share a common factor of 1, 17 and 6 also only share a common factor of 1, so it looks like we are multiplying larger numbers. So we're first going to do 17 times 29. That's going to give us 493. And 5 times 6 is equal to 30. So now we have 493 divided by 30, a large improper fraction. So let's do our long division. So 30 doesn't go into 4, but goes into 49 once. Subtract, we get 19. 193. That goes in 6 times. 6 times 30 is 180. Subtract, and we get 13. So our final answer is 16 holes and 13 out of 30. So 16 and 13 thirtieths. Question number four, we have five times two and two thirds. So every time that we have a whole number, we can just put that whole number over one. This way it helps some of us to have a denominator even if we do not need it. And then we'll change two and two thirds into an impro uh, improper fraction. So three times two is six, plus two is eight. So we get times eight thirds. So we look, 5 and 3, only a common factor of 1. 1 and 8, also only a common factor of 1. So we get 5 times 8, which is 40, over 1 times 3, which is 3. So then we do 40 divided by 3. 4 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Subtract, we get 1. Bring down the 0. 10 divided by 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract, we get 1. So our answer is 13 whole times and 1 out of 3 left over. So 13 and 1 third. Sample question number 5. We have 1 half times 5 eighths times 2 and 3 fourths. So first thing I'm going to do, 
turn the mixed number into an improper fraction. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So I'm going to have 11 fourths. So we have 5 eighths and 1 half. Now I'm going to look and see if there's any numbers that can be cross simplified. So can the number 2 be simplified with 1, 5, or 11? No. Can 8 be simplified with 1, 5, or 11? No. Can 4 be simplified with 1, 5, or 11? No. So now we can just multiply across. 1 times 5 times 11. So 1 times 5 is 5. Times 11 is going to be 55. 2 times 8 is 16. And 16 times 4 is 64. So if I multiply these three together, I get 55 60 fourths. Final answer. All right, let's move to our division. So one thing that we like to write is if we look, that's K, C, F. So I'm going to keep my first fraction is 3 sevenths. I'm going to change my division sign to multiplication. And because both of my fractions were already proper fractions, there's nothing to convert at the beginning. So 9 fourths flips and becomes 9 over 4. So I look and see if I can cross simplify. 3 and 4 only share a common factor of 1. 7 and 9 only shares a common factor of 1. So we multiply straight across. 3 times 9 is 27. 7 times 4 is 28. So in this case, we got 27 28 We have 3 fifths divided by 1 and 1 third. So the first thing we do is we're going to turn this improper, this mixed number into improper. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So what we really have is 3 fifths divided by 4 thirds. Now I think about my K, C, and my F. Notice I lined them up perfectly underneath to match what I'm trying to do. So 3 fifths, we keep it the same. Division becomes multiplication, and we flip our fraction over, so we have 3 fourths. Again, I look side to side or crossways, so I look 3 and 4, only share a common factor of 1, 5 and 3, only share a common factor of 1, so we multiply. 3 times 3 is 9, 5 times 4 is 20, so we get 9 twentieths as our final answer. Number eight, we have three and three fourths divided by seven eighths. So, same idea. Let's turn our mixed number into improper. Four times three is 12, plus three is 15. So we have 15 fourths divided by seven eighths. Let's follow our KCF. We keep 15 fourths the same. Division changes to multiplication, and we flip our fraction. 8 sevenths. I'm going to look crossways and notice that 4 and 8 share a common factor of 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So if I multiply, that's 15 times 2 is equal to 30. 1 times 7 is 7. So now I can actually make it into a mixed number. So let's take our division. We have 30 divided by 7. That's 4. 4 times 7 is 28. Subtract, we get 2. So our final answer will be 4 and 2 sevenths. Sample question number 9. 4 and 5 sixths divided by 1 and 3 eighths. All right, so we look. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 5 is 29. So in this case, we have 29 over 6 divided by 8 times 1 is 8, plus 3 is 11. We have 11 eighths. Now when I think about my KCF, I have my 29 sixths. Let's keep it, we keep it. The division sign becomes multiplication. And we flip our fraction over, 11 
8 over 11. So 11 eighths becomes 8 over 11. I look diagonally. I see 6 and 8 share a common factor of 2. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now I can multiply. I have 29 times 4, which equals 116. 3 times 11 is 33. I'm then going to divide it to make it into a mixed number. 116 divided by 33. So that's going to go in three times. Give me 99. Subtract. We get a remainder of 17. So our answer is 3 and 17 over 33. Sample question number 10, we have 8 divided by 3 and 2 thirds. So remember, 8 is going to become 8 over 1, and that will be divided by 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11, so that's 11 thirds. And now we think about K, C, F. We keep 8 over 1, we change the division symbol to multiplication, and we flip 11 thirds to 3 over 11. If we look diagonally, we cannot simplify, so we multiply across. 8 times 3 is 24. 1 times 11 is 11. We do have an improper fraction, so we will do 24 divided by 11. That's 2. 2 times 11 is 22. Subtract, we get 2. So our final answer is 2 holes and two elevenths, so two and two elevenths. Sample question number 11. I promise we only have two more of these, including this one. So if we look, first step, let's turn this number, our first number into a improper fraction. So 10 times six is 60, plus seven is 67 tenths. And we are going to divide it by 2 over 1. So we're just going to add that denominator. And we still think K, C, F. So we keep 67 tenths. We change the division to multiplication. And we flip this to become 1 half. So 2 over 1 becomes 1 over 2. Now we multiply. We have 67 over 10 times 2 is 20. So I'm going to do my division. 67 divided by 20, that gives me 3 times 20 is 60, subtract we get 7, and our final answer is 3 and 7 twentieths. Our final question. So we see that we have three numbers here, and we have multiplication and division. Remember, order of operations tells us to do the first thing we can, left to right. So I'm going to take first 2 and 3 eighths, and turn it into an improper fraction. So 8 times 2 is 16, plus 3 is 19. So I have 19 eighths here. So for step 1, let's take 3 fourths and multiply it by 19 over 8. If I look diagonally, I do not see anything that can be simplified. So I have 3 times 19, which is 57. 4 times 8 is 32. So I'm going to do 57 over 32. Now, we do not have to turn this into a mixed number just yet because it's not the end. We would have to, if we turn this into a mixed number, we'd have to go right back into an improper fraction for part 2. So this was part 1, and if we look, we're at part 2, which is 57 over 32 divided by 5 over 6. So in this case, we still have to think of our KFC, or K, sorry, KCF. Got myself hungry just then. So I have 57 over 32 keeps, we keep that. Division becomes multiplication, and 5 sixths becomes 6 fifths. Now the only thing I know I can do when I look diagonally is divide both of these by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 32 divided by 2 is 16. And now I can multiply. So I have 57 times 3, which equals 171 over 16 times 5, which is 80. So then I do the division. 171 divided by 80, that's twice, 160. Subtract, we get 11. 
So our answer would be 2 and 11 80ths. Notice how by waiting till the end to make a mixed number, we did not have to change anything back. All right, we have come to the end of multiplying and dividing mixed numbers and fractions. I hope you learned a bunch today. I hope it helped. And good luck studying. Can't wait to see you soon. Y'all, that was wild, but congratulations on crushing another lesson here at Nurse Hub. You should be proud and then continue working to make sure you fully understand everything that you just watched. Remember, practice is the only thing that we need to make ourselves better at all of these topics. Good luck, and I hope to see you soon.